Chanting has always been an important element of the Chamorro culture. Chanting is the ancient form of a traditional library. The lyrical content incorporates knowledge of folklore, customs, language, artistry, and craftsmanship. After Magellan landed on Guahan in 1521, traders, explorers, and missionaries from various European countries observed and documented the form of chanting. Father San Vitoris observed 12 or 13 joined in a circle and without moving, singing in a verse and in measured time, their histories and legends, in three-part singing, with the occasional tenor assistance of one of the chiefs who attended these fiestas. During the Spanish colonization, chanting transitioned from oral histories to having a religious role in the community. Chanting was and is still used in various religious activities within the Catholic Church. We can see this relationship through the role of the Tetza, who is the prayer leader. The Tetza directs and recites the prayers and hymns for various religious activities within the Catholic Church, including rosaries, novenas, and other devotions and other special occasions. The characteristic monotonous nasal style by which a tetza recites prayers, especially in the repetition of phrases in the rosary and litanies, has been lightened to the traditional chanting and weeping described in ancient Chamorro funeral practices. Tetzas really would not have begun until Father Salvatore came to Guam in 1668. From that time, the Jesuit priests were in charge of, of um, catechism and prayers and teaching their young people. And out of that stemmed the Novena books. Uh, was first in, in, in Spanish because the uh, Chamorro language wasn't written. Today, as a Tetza in this church, if there is a, a certain uh, manner of how you say the Rosary of the Dead when it, it's being laid out and stayed here in the church ground. Now, when they come in to say the Rosary, you don't say the Rosary that we would normally do at your home, or how the traditional Tetsa or, or Rosary is conducted, you don't do it anymore. You, you follow the way the church wants you to follow and say it in church, which is, was instituted by Pope John Paul II. Although chanting has a strong religious affiliation, it wasn't until the 1970s and 1980s, through the exposure to the other Pacific cultures, that the thought of reviving and reconstructing a pre-colonial form of chanting on Guahan began. Traditional Chamorro chant um, was a very important part of our oral, our oral, our oral traditions, our oral literature. Um, that was the way that information was retained and transmitted from one generation to the next. By around the 1980s or so, there began to be uh, a growing interest in our in our community for things traditional, things indigenous. And, um, and we saw this, we, this was something that was marked by the rise of Chamorro performance groups. Um, in the course of my research, I realized that 
the way the way the modern Chamor were portraying themselves in the performance arts um, didn't quite match the the uh, um, the idea of how of how Chamorros should portray themselves in in performance art. The the Sambatoris account, the model that was provided in, in the Sambatoris account is a model of Chamorro performance art circa 1660s. Um, as I said, we used that model to develop our guidelines and to, to develop our formulas that we would, that we would give to uh, our cultural reconstructionists in our, in our research team. The impact of chanting on today's generation can be seen through those taking part in its revival. The lion was uh, was able to give me more of a purpose and a reason to do it, and a, and um, a reason to do it, a purpose to do it. You know, a worthwhile, very uh, you know, in my my very strong belief, a very honorable uh, honorable purpose. You know, to revitalize the language in in this format, right? For those of you, right, that um, that are searching for your cultural identity, for who your people are, for how your language sounds. You know, try, I would like to encourage you to try all that you can. Listen to everything that you can get your hands on, right? Everything that's written to get, anything that you can get your hands on, whether a spoken song or written, right? Take that and take the time to read it, right? Um, if you don't know what it means, of, co of course you won't readily know what it means, right? Ask someone, right? Ask an elder. If for some reason that elder gets impatient with you, right, don't stop there, right? Learn from someone else or ask another person. Learn from anybody and everybody that you can, right? But, uh, you know, also be aware that there are people that might be trying to jive you, right? <laughs> you know, be, you have to be able to think critically and try to be able to discern whether or not that person is saying this in jest or he's saying he's being, he or she is being serious. Right, so whatever you learn from one person, double check it, right? Whether in a book, in a dictionary, or with someone else, another elder, double check, triple, double, triple, quadruple check as much as you can to, for you to make sure that that is absolutely what this word means, or that's what this process. 